So Pierre Jeanret, 1896, and died in 1967. Uh, he was actually nine years younger than, uh, than uh, his uh, star uh, cousin, Le Corbusier. So Pierre Jeanret, born in 1896, uh, was a Swiss architect. You see the 22nd of March, and today is the 22nd of March, was a Swiss architect who collaborated with his cousin, Charles-Edouard Jeanret, who assumed the pseudonym Le Corbusier for about 20 years. Uh, that's a remarkably long uh, time, you know, because I imagine Le Corbusier was not uh, uh, an easy uh, partner of work at all. In 1922, the Jeanret cousins set up an architectural practice together. So at that time, Pierre Jeanret was 26 years old, uh, while Le Corbusier was 35. <clears throat> From 1927 to 1937, they worked together with Charlotte Perriot, a remarkable uh, lady uh, architect, and the Le Corbusier, uh, the Le Corbusier Pierre Jeanret studio, Rue de Sèvres. So, uh, initially, the, the architecture office belonged to both Le Corbusier and Pierre Jeanret, uh, the man we pay homage to today. In 1929, the trio prepared the house fitting section for the decorative artist exhibition and asked for a group stand, renewing and widening the 1928 avant-garde group idea. Nice. We need that too, again. This was refused by the Decorative Artists Committee. They resigned and founded the Union of Modern Artists, Union des Artistes Modernes, UAM. The cousins later designed many buildings, including a number of villas and vacation houses and renovated existing buildings as well. Their working relationship ended when Pierre joined the French resistance and the Corbusier worked with the Vichy government, a collaborationist regime to the Nazi Germany. Let's read this again. The working relationship of Charles Edouard Jeanret and Pierre Jeanret ended when Pierre joined the French revolution, uh, the French resistance, sorry, and Le Corbusier worked with the Vichy government, which collaborated with the Nazi Germany. This is something we should not forget. In my opinion, Pierre was, was on the right side of history, but not Le Corbusier. And I have the highest admiration uh, and affection for Le Corbusier, but it hurts to see that politically, Pierre was also younger, uh, was uh, much more um, correct than uh, Le Corbusier. They collaborated once again after the war on the plan and architecture for the new town of Chandigarh in India. Uh, and uh, actually Le Corbusier left Chandigarh, uh, returned to France while Pierre remained in India. And there he built and he also uh, supervised the construction of the buildings in the Chandigarh capital and also designed furniture. It has some remarkable uh, uh, pieces of furniture, chairs, uh, mainly. So this was, um, this was uh, Pierre Jeanret. Again, Pierre Jeanret. Hello, Monsieur Jeanret. Uh, happy birthday to you. I'm absolutely sure he was a, a very capable uh, and interesting man. Can you imagine Le Corbusier with, uh, collaborating, uh, you know, in positions of, uh, you know, equality with someone who didn't have himself uh, significant, uh, you know, uh, qualities, intellectual, uh, artistic, and so on. Pierre Genre, the younger cousin of Le Corbusier. Here he is again. You are going to see a picture um let's i hope i have it here with both of them here he's on the bike in india in Chandigarh. um you know uh, near one of the buildings they built there here he is with le corbusier le corbusier on the left and uh, he's young a little bit younger well not so little nine years younger um uh, cousin Pierre Jean standing. Yeah, this is the picture which amused me always when I looked at Le Corbusier. In my opinion, a little bit, uh, you know, 
questionably dressed, uh, you know, in, in the, this, uh, you know, ceremonial way, uh, considering what he was doing there. But who knows, maybe they were going to an important meeting or returning from an important meeting. Anyway, I think Le Corbusier had a genuine affection for Pierre, and it was probably reciprocal. Drawings of Pierre Genre uh, for chairs, he designed chairs, he built chairs, you'll see them. He was a good designer, he was a good architect, you know. Uh, and unfortunately, I mean, he had uh, the lack of luck to, 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 to live and work in the shadow of uh, Le Corbusier. But uh, that's why I think it's important sometimes to look at who is in the shadow of anything, because sometimes there is value uh, in, in places where we don't think of searching for. And, um, you know, uh, there are such cases. You know, the good architects who are not known, they are not famous. I mean, he is in, in a way, you know, Pierre Jean Ray is still a Jean Ray, but um, not everybody knows about him. Anyway, we do the symposium in memory, memory of Pierre Jean Ray. Uh, I, I, this was a building, I don't know what happened with this building. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if it was built. And I don't know why I made this presentation uh, two or three years ago. Uh, I forgot why it is called. Maybe this, this wording is connected with what we look at here. Uh, maybe some kind of a ceremonial building. Uh, you know, I don't know why it is called a symposium, but anyway, it's a drawing. We are going to look at buildings he built, architecture, architecture, Gandhi, Bahavan, Bach, Bahavan, um, not bad, you know, I, I mean, uh, if this was built by Le Corbusier, I would have said the same thing. It's not bad. It was built by Pierre Genre. I, I almost like it a little more than some of the buildings built by uh, his uh, more, uh, more famous uh, brother, uh, cousin. Now, maybe there is some influence here coming from Le Corbusier, and maybe it's not, uh, it's not uh, a little influence, I don't know. But uh, it's, it's, it's a good building, and built not by Le Corbusier, but by Pierre Jarre. So I guess it's some kind of a memorial for Gandhi. Not bad, Pierre Jarre. It's always good to have some water around the building, you know, because you have the reflection. <clears throat> and even if the building is not impressive, when it is refle reflected and thus uh, multiplied with two, you have a building twice, so to speak, it becomes interesting. But in this case, the building has value, architecturally speaking, and, uh, you know, with or without the reflection in, in the water. Now, Pierre Jean Ray, the house museum in Chandigar is his own house in Chandigar, which is now a museum. This one also is interesting, you know, it's more subdued than the buildings by uh, Le Corbusier, but uh, it, it, it has qualities. And I, I like, in a way, the fact that it's not, uh, you know, uh, extravagant, uh, you know, it's more subdued, but uh, it does have qualities. Also, I like the fact that he employs uh, ornamentation, you know, like uh, what we see here in red and also, you know, the texture of this wall. So it's not uh, the dogmatic whiteness of Villa Savoie. This is almost like an abstraction of a portrait, you know, a, a face with an eye and, uh, you know, I wonder if he did it intentionally, but it's interesting because it is a little bit curved, this wall and the, the way the shadow, uh, 
uh, this particular uh, point in the day when the sun, the sunlight comes the, the way it does here. Interesting work, his own house, Pierre Jean Ray. He built those chairs. Uh, here he is, very interesting chair, and he built it. I saw a picture, I don't, I don't know if I have it here in this presentation, with uh, many discarded chairs by Pierre Jean Ray. I think part of one of the major structures at Chandigarh, they were cleaning up or something where, I hope I have that picture because, you know, beautiful chairs, you know, very solidly made, maybe not so adventurous as this one, which has a hybridity about it because of the different materials he used. But uh, I think uh, he, I think he was good, uh, Pierre Genre. And I'm absolutely sure uh, Le Corbusier knew it too. That's why he was partners with uh, Pierre Genre for 20 years. Interesting that I look at this window and at this door, the way the glass is divided into smaller parts. And I don't know if you know, there is a picture with Le Corbusier in his so-called office near Le Cabanon in the south of France, where he returned to the grandma window, so to speak, you know, uh, with, uh, with the, you know the, the glass being divided just like here on this door forget about the horizontal band of glass, um, continuous horizontal window now. Uh, Le Corbusier <laughs> returned to uh, the opposite kind of window. There are pictures with, uh, with him in the, the so-called office, which was actually two meters by three meters, if you can imagine. That was his office, you know, approximately six, six square meters. Yeah, it's true, he was facing the Mediterranean Sea, but... Uh, <laughs> The space was probably the smallest uh, architecture office uh, in the world ever. Uh, and again, the window was kind of like this. Maybe the influence was not just from Le Corbusier towards uh, Pierre Jean Ray, but also from Pierre Jean Ray towards Le Corbusier. It's possible. But even here, you know, this, this um, stair and the handrail in a way, it's more creative than uh, what we see also with a, spire, a spiral staircase at uh, Villa Savoie. Yes, he was not as radical as his more famous brother, uh, cousin, but still a good architect. Oh, I know there are some people who protest uh, about this kind of uh, arrangement where you have the bathroom with a toilet here, you know, I mean, not only it's an exterior wall, but uh, the, the whole bathroom is, you know, emphatically uh, outside of the limits of the house, so to speak. It's okay. I, I know countless examples like this, but I know that certain people think that this is not appropriate to do, but... Uh, uh, it's fine. I mentioned Kikutake, the metabolist. Well, he has a, a building which he built actually with a, a hotel with all the bathrooms like um, cells coming out of the body of the, of the hotel, a circular um, hotel. Anyway, this is the house by uh, <clears throat> Pierre Jean Ray, for Pierre Jean Ray in India, in Chandigarh. Romantic interior. This is a chair designed by him.
the other genre, that's how he, he is known as the other genre. But look at these buildings. The other genre, in my opinion, deserves attention. Not Le Corbusier, but Pierre Genre, not Charles Edouard Genre, T. Le Corbusier, but Pierre Genre. He never changed his name. Type 13 J House in Chandigarh by Pierre Genre. Now, if he would have built such buildings uh, in the present, he probably would have received the Pritzker Prize. After all, uh, you know, uh, such uh, buildings uh, built by Aravena. In fact, uh, I, I wouldn't say they are superior to what uh, Pierre Jean did. Houses for peons, I don't know what peons is, under construction, also sector 23. I think these were buildings in various parts of Chandigarh, probably some kind of, uh, you know, social housing. Look, they, they build them uh, with very primitive means. But uh, I like very much this picture. It's alive, you know, it's, uh, uh, of course, uh, you know, the requirements for uh, in the building industry would not uh, permit for with such ladders uh, or, uh, but, you know, I'm sure that nobody died and they built some interesting things, as we can see. I like these works very much. Because again, it's not a dogmatic uh, modernism. You know, you have, uh, yes, it's vigorous. Yes, it's probably not an expensive building or serious of buildings, but they, you know, he introduced ornamentation you know, yes, uh, on a grid or whatever, but it's still bringing, uh, you know, sensitivity to the building. Another type 5J house, uh, here it is. It would be interesting actually to make a presentation or to, 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 yeah, to present or to study the works, you know, kind of for similar uh, programs or functions uh, comparative uh, analysis or a comparative, uh, you know, presentation on Le Corbusier and Pierre Genre, because you can tell this is not the building that uh, Le Corbusier would have built, but it was built by his cousin, Pierre Genre. Opera with a question mark, I uh, wasn't very clear in some, uh, on some websites, I, 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 yeah, it was an opera. Maybe I place the, the question mark because I was wondering, did Chandigarh really need an opera? Plus, <clears throat> this is not how we imagine an opera building is. We imagine an opera be, building to be like, uh, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, Charles Garnier did in Paris or, uh, you know, med architects in the present, uh, flamboyant uh, building, you know, uh, loudly saying, I'm the opera. But look at this, this is very modest. And uh, kind of, I like it in a way more, you know, why should uh, an opera building be, uh, you know, crushingly, uh, you know, uh, distant in a way and, uh, uh, you know, luxurious and all the rest. A more modest uh, opera would be, I think, nice, more humane. Cantina, a cantina, a very interesting work you'll see in Chandigarh. Look at this. You know, it's a place to eat. A cantina in Romanian, but, uh, you know, it's done architecturally in an interesting way. Uh, why should be, why, why should a cantina, cantina, or cantina be a banal building? And I end this presentation on him with some furniture designs by him. We already know that he designed uh, here. This is the picture that I was referring to with lots of his chairs. I don't know, I hope temporarily they were discarded or uh, you know taken out from one place in order to be brought to another place. Um, I wish I had such a chair, if not several very, you know, uh, massively built, you know, uh, solid wood. 
unlike the furniture of Ikea. This uh, probably would last forever. Pierre Jean, the cousin of Le Corbusier, the cousin of Charles Edouard Jean Rey, was born on the 22nd of March, 1896, nine years after Le Corbusier was born. At least this furniture, you know, these pieces of furniture were designed by Pierre Jean Rey and not by Charlotte Perion as it happened with uh, some important pieces of furniture designed by so-called Le Corbusier. That's it. Happy birthday, Pierre Jeanret.